Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we shall be looking at a bi-orthogonal system. So let's understand what is bi-orthogonal system first and then we'll move on towards the norm spaces where this concept of bi-orthogonal system is applied in context of compact linear operators. So first of all, let's understand what is this bi-orthogonal system. According to Wikipedia, we have this definition. Suppose we have a pair of index families. So that means we have some uh, a member of family here. So that means uh, all the functions or it, they could be functions, vectors. We have a common property. So that is known as a family. And we have another family from some other space, right? So then we have a pair of index families. They have some indexes say 1, 2, 3 and 4, such that the spaces they belong to, they form a pair of topological vector spaces that are in duality. So that means though the vectors which are in this space and in this space, those two spaces, they are basically the topological vector spaces. And moreover, they are dual to each other. The spaces are dual to each other. and uh, whatever is the mapping between them, that is a bilinear mapping. And moreover, uh, this quantity delta subscript ij that represents the Kronecker's delta, right? So that is a bi-orthogonal system. So in context of compact linear operators, let's see what is a bi-orthogonal system. So we, if we are given linearly independent set f1, f2 up to fm in the dual space x, dash. Now, here we have the dual space x dash of the given normed space x. And from this dual space, we are taking elements. What are these elements? They are the functionals which are taken from the dual space. So, we are considering a set which contains linearly independent functionals within it. So, according to this, we have another pair of elements z1, z2 up to zm, right? All of them, they are indexed because we have named the indexes indices as 1, 2, up to m here in both the cases. Now, these elements, these vectors z1 up to zm, they are taken from the normed space x itself such that what is the relationship between these functionals and these vectors? We have this relationship that when we apply fj onto zk, now this would give you 1 whenever the index is same. So that means you have the quantity f1, z1 is equal to 1 f2 z2 that is equal to 2 and so on up to fm zn that is equal to 2 and whenever you have different indexes this thing would be going to be 0 so suppose if you have f of f2 of z4 so that would give you 0 because 2 and 4 they are not equal to each other so this is what this lemma tells us and this basically forms the definition for the bi-orthogonal system. So now let's first of all move on to prove this particular result. So uh, let's move further to prove this result. Here we wanted to say that whenever we apply uh, this thing, we have 1 and otherwise we have 0. So first of all, we assume that this set f1 up to fm that represent a linearly independent set in the normed space x dash, that is the dual space of the given normed space. Now, because all these functionals, they could be arranged in any manner. So their order does not matter at all. So it is sufficient to prove here that there exists some vector zm in the given normed space x such that whenever we apply fm onto zm that is equal to 1 and on all other elements z, uh, all other functionals when applied onto the zm uh, except m so f1 f2 f3 up to fm minus 1 when applied onto zm they will give you 0 but when fm applied on to zm that will give you 1 so this will prove the result why because here the index zm that is uh, arbitrary in nature, right? Because uh, it could be any one among all of these. So uh, we would be proving the general result. Now, in order to prove this result, we'll apply the procedure of mathematical induction. So here, when m is equal to 1, the result holds. Why? Because when m is 1, so that means we are just taking f1 here. And because f1 
is a linearly independent functional so that cannot be zero in itself and if this is non zero so that means there would exist some vector x0 here such that when you apply f1 onto x0 that would be non zero right so if we denote z1 as the thing but alpha times of this x0 x0 then what uh, we are if we fix the scalar alpha as the quantity 1 by f1 x0 so when we apply f1 on z1 it would be f1 of what is the value of z1 here it is alpha of x0 so we would have f1 alpha of x0 here so now because alpha is a scalar could be taken outside this linear functional being linear so it could be taken out so when you have alpha here f1 of x0 and now we can substitute the value of alpha here in this so it would be 1 by f1 x0 f1 x0 so this and this quantity they cancel each other effects and finally we have one here so you see when we have the same index we have one here so this is what we wanted to prove and there is no other index in this case when m is equal to 1 so all other cases would not could not be discussed in this case now according we'll apply the principle of mathematical induction here so we assume that the hypothesis is correct whenever we have m minus 1 elements entries with us so by induction we assume that the lemma holds whenever x uh, whenever we have m minus 1 quantities with us so that means the norm space x contains the elements z1 z2 up to zm minus 1 such that when we apply fk zk Uh, on f k on to z k, so we'll be getting one where what is k? K varies from one to m minus one, and whenever we have different indices, it would be zero. Whenever these two indices they are not equal to each other, so this is what we are assuming here according to mathematical induction. Now we'll prove the result for m is equal uh, for m, right? So that means we'll be proving that for all the elements. Uh, for all the functionals f1 f2 up to fm there uh, the norm space x would contain the vector z1 z2 up to zm such that when you apply fk zk is equal to 1 uh, fk on to zk it would be 1 whenever k varies from 1 to m and all other different for all the different indices it would be resulting in a zero right so this is what we wanted to prove here so here in order to move on to proving this thing we'll prove the result through the method of contradiction let's see how for that we first of all consider a set m we are calling this set to be m and this m contains all those elements x here such that when you apply all the functionals f1 f2 uh, f3 up to fm minus 1 on to all the members of x they result in zero this is what m so that means for the set m here it contains all those elements such that when you apply f1 onto this x it is zero f2 onto this x it is again zero and up to fm minus 1 it is resulting in a zero so all those elements they form this set x such that all the functionals up to f1 to fm they result in a zero now we show that this set cont also contains zm tilde right this is what we wanted to prove such that when we apply fm on to zm tilde so that means whenever we have the same index we have a non zero quantity here which is beta and uh, our, then our zm would be nothing but beta inverse of zm tilde right so that would be our zm so this would prove our result how because when you apply fm on to zm so it would be fm times beta inverse of zm tilde so you can take this beta inverse outside so it would be fm of zm tilde and what is zm tilde so if you see your fm zm tilde is beta so it would result in a 1 and this is what we wanted to have with us okay so this will pr prove our result so we wanted to uh, we have constructed a set m which contains all those 
वेक्टर्स x सच दैट f1 वन ऑफ दैट वेक्टर अप टू एफ एम माइनस वन ऑफ दैट वेक्टर इज जीरो नाउ वी वॉन्टेड टू से दैट दिस सेट ऑल्सो कंटेन्स जेड एम टिल डे सच दैट वेन यू वेन वी अप्लाई एफ एम ऑन टू जेड एम टिल डे दैट रिजल्ट इन अ बीटा वेयर वॉट इज आर जेड एम दैट इज बीटा इनवर्स ऑफ जेड एम टिल डे सो नाउ वील यूज द मेथड ऑफ कॉन्ट्रडिक्शन वी अज्यूम दैट इफ पॉसिबल एफ एम ऑफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू जीरो फॉर ऑल एक्स बिलोंगिंग टू एक्स सो Uh, we uh, in this set we were considering only f uh, the elements or the functionals up to f m minus one. So now uh, because we are proving it through the method of contradiction, we'll be assuming that f m of x is also equal to zero for all the x belonging to the normed space x. So this is an assumption uh, which we are taking by the method of contradiction. Now for any such x. Which is present in the normed space, we'll construct another element x tilde such that it is nothing but x minus the linear combination of f one up to f m minus one of z j, right? So that is what we are saying. Then according to equation three, now let's see what is our equation three. According to our assumption uh, of this hypothesis, mathematical hypothesis, the result for m minus one elements. For any k which is less than equal to m minus one, if we apply f k onto x tilde, now we have x tilde as this quantity, right? Now if we apply f k onto this, so what we'll getting, what we will be getting, we would have f k of x minus summation f j x z j. So because all these f j f k's they are linear functionals, so we can separate out the terms. We can take out the constant quantities so this first term would be as such here and this term we can open up the summation so it would be f1 x z1 plus up to f m minus 1 x z m minus 1 now uh, because this is functional and this quantity that is a scalar because you see functional always map some element x to the real uh, no numbers right or the complex number so th this is basically a scalar so this could be taken outside and the functional fk could be applied onto z1 so this is, we we would have fk of z1 and similarly on all the terms we would have all these quantities again f m minus 1 x is a constant so it could be taken outside and then fk of z m minus 1 so here we have So in between all these terms, in between the index one to m minus one, we would have some index k also, right? So for this index, if now you see carefully, we have f k of z one uh, and f k of z two, f k of z three, and so on, f k of z k, and then f k of z m minus one. So now you see for this term here, we have the same index. k and k so that means this term would result in a 1 and all the other terms here fk of z1 fk of z2 they'll result in a 0 so that means all the terms in the summation would result in a 0 and we are only left with this term here which would not be nothing but fk of x so now you see this term and this terms they cancel out each other so we'll be having 0 so we have a proof here we have uh, uh, we have just Calculated that f k of x tilde that is nothing but zero whenever k is less than equal to m minus one. So that means this x tilde is nothing but a member of M, the set M that we have constructed because for all k which are less than equal to m minus one, when this functional is applied onto this element, we are getting a zero. so that means according to our assumption if this element is a member of m so that means when we apply fm on to this element this is again going to be a zero and what was our x tilde so remember the definition of x tilde it, it was x minus the linear combination of uh, these functionals so according to this one here uh, we have x tilde as x minus of this quantity so x would be x tilde plus summation of this quantity so when we apply fm on on to x so what would we get here so this x could be written as x plus summation fjx zj according to the 
definition that we have defined above now because fm that is a linear functional so we can separate out the terms here now according to our assumption this fm x tilde that is equal to 0 so this term is 0 and here we can open up the summation so now you see all of these quantities they are scalar in nature so that means they could be taken outside this summation and the, because this fm that is a linear functional so that means this functional could be applied on to all of these z j so we would have f j x and f m z j so that means if we write this f j x sorry if we write this f m z j as a scalar alpha j so we would have summation j varies from 1 to m minus 1 alpha j times of f j x where what is j j varies from 1 to m minus 1 so that means here for an any arbitrary element x here from the normed space we have written f m as a linear combination of f1 f2 up to f m minus 1 right so that means if we consider this set of f1 f2 up to f m so that would form a linearly independent set why because we have just written f m as a linear combination of f1 f2 up to f m minus 1 right so according to this we reach at a contradiction because uh, we initially it was given that the set f1 up to fm that is a linearly independent set taken from the dual space of the given normed space x so that means whatever we have assumed is incorrect we have assumed that for any member x belonging to the set m fm of x is equal to 0 that is incorrect so that means the set m that should contain a quantity zm such that equation 2 holds what is equation 2 that means whenever we apply the same index it would result in whenever we apply the same index it would result in a 1 and whenever we apply a different index it would result in a 0 right because of our construction that i have just told you according to the zm tilde here from the zm tilde we have zm such that this same index would result in a 1 right so this is what uh, is the proof of this lemma so the lemma is proved in this way so i hope you understood the proof of this lemma this is a very easy proof and you have also i think understood what is a pi orthogonal system well that is it for this video thank you for watching